one thing of you know, there's the, you know, it's division. a fulfillment of prophecy. Oh, okay. That That's in the lot. last days there will be division of the church. So right. we are in the last days that people some will be sifting out, some will be sifted in. So but we, personally, we should prepare ourselves by reading the spirit of prophecy and reading the Bible so that we will not be sifted out. Right. So if there is division of the church, it makes us aware or it will warn us that we are in the last days and it's not a joke, you know. So we should be diligently praying the Bible Amen. for us to be sifted in that when Jesus comes, we are ready. I think that's the, uh, I, I wouldn't call it the goodness of division, I think that's the warning of division. If we are divided, we'll be sifted out. Either we quit, or we become um, a stumbling block to others. But, you know, the prophecy is being fulfilled right in our very eyes, which is a good point. Now, how do we deal with people who don't agree, who don't agree with us? Pray for them, all right, that's one. How do we deal with people who don't agree with us? Now, that's a hard thing. Or let me, let me paraphrase my question. How do we deal with people who don't get along with us and who criticize us? Be a good example to them, that's okay, that's two. Pray for them, be a good example, what else? Or just be indifferent or stay at home. So how could the church move if you stay at home and be indifferent? That's one of the problems, the symptoms of, of having some conflicts in the church, we become indifferent. It's so easy to be indifferent. It's so easy to just stay at home and, ah, I don't want to go to church because people there are just hypocrites or stuff like that, right? But, hey, listen, we are, we are a body of Jesus. If, our, if one part of our body is aching, what happens to the whole body? So everybody is important, everybody has a function. If your tooth aches, you can smile. <laughs> have you tried smiling with an aching tooth? If you don't have a tooth, what happens? You can smile. <laughs> Remember? If your, if your stomach is aching, what happens to your body? How do we get along with those people who are difficult? That's the question. How as Christians, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16, the first medium of communication that we do when we don't like person is probably our, what do we do? We communicate. Some people, they are, they're comfortable without communicating but gesturing or non-verbal. So there are verbal and non-verbal approaches. When we don't like somebody, it's either in the Filipino sense, we snob. Have you, have you tried that? You snob, snobbish, you know? You ignore, or you don't speak anywhere, or you speak your mind. Speak your mind and give that person a piece of what you're thinking. And then what happens? A Pandora. A Pandora of of dislike. A can of worms is open and then you don't like each other anymore. So what is the best approach according to Paul, Ephesians 4? Let's read it, Ephesians 4, 15, 16. Are you there? I know this is very difficult, it needs practice and discipline. Ephesians chapter 4, what does the Bible say? Ephesians chapter 4. Alright, are you there? If you're there, can you, can you say Amen? Ephesians 4 verse 17. 15 to 16 I mean, I'm sorry. Are you there? At the back? What does it say? Can somebody read it loud so that you know at least I, I can hear you? Ephesians 4, 15, 16. Alright, let's go. Who would like to read it? Loudly. The chair is, is raising her hand. Can you, a charm, I'm sorry. Can you, can you read it loudly, charm? Okay, Charm, could you read it now?
have you heard what what uh, charm read? But you are reading it right there, right? But speak the truth in agape love. The reason why there is no togetherness. Because not only we complain, not only we criticize destructively, there is an uncaring spirit. Is because the Holy Spirit has not been in our hearts, teaching us how to love, teaching us how to speak the right words. To our and Paul emphasized that, hey, we can only get along with somebody who is very difficult if we have the love of Jesus in our hearts and we understand that person that we are dealing with. Because if by our own nature, we will allow our own nature to, to express itself, what will we say to that person or what will we do? Get even, revenge, unforgiving, right? Does that make sense? Does that resonate to you? It's only the spirit of love. Can we win other people and that we can move together? Right? That's why Jesus says, if you agree together, everything is possible. You can ask and God will give it to you. If a husband and wife agree and they love each other, the children will see that they love each other. And the children will, will express it in their own lives. Right? If a pastor does not love the, the people, the people will see. And the people will not reciprocate what the pastor uh, what the pastor is trying to do positively. And if we have friends, we can have to be friendly, or we can have more friends if we don't love people. Would you agree with me? It's only the church that is filled with the love of Jesus that can put together. Because not all of us can be the head. If all of us will be the head, what will be happening? If, if every member of the church is the head, every member of the church should listen, I should, should, not, should be commanding what will happen to the church. Okay, yes. What will happen to the church if everybody else will just wait? Yeah. What will happen if, if the church you know, uh, will not follow the head? It's awkward, right? What will happen to your body you know, uh, our body, if our hands decided not to do what its intention or what it's, the hand is supposed to do. What will happen if our eyes will say, you know what, I'm on a strike. I will not, I will not use the vision today. What will happen if our, if our mouth decided to just stop talking? Well, it's good, but... <laughs> What will happen? The reason why the church, this church, is in need of the Spirit is because we need to grow and, and do God's work together. And that's the appeal of our lesson for this week. We're doing it together. We have the same purpose. We have the same function. Oh, we have different functions, but we have the same purpose. Unity, not uniformity. Now, the spirit of envy should not be in our hearts if some people are succeeding in leading out. Right? Because that's the normal tendency of people. If, if the church is growing, people begin, some people begin to be envious. Some people begin to be jealous. And that's what exactly what Lucifer did to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was envious and jealous of Jesus as the commander-in-chief of all the heaven hosts. Friends, we want to go home. But we had to go home together. And you know, we may be different, but we need to be together. What do you say? What's your response? Who unites us? Jesus. And if we have to say something, remember the principle. Have we spoken it in love? Have we done it in love? Have I done it in love? Amen? So that's the gist of our lesson for this week. Do you have any comments or questions? Is it 
true that the church that has no problem is a problem? Well, I think it's a dead church. I don't know. Because only, the only in the cemetery can you find people buried who have no problem. Everywhere we go, there will be challenges and problems, right? If you want to have, if you want to have a peaceful, no problem life, you go to the cemetery and observe. And actually, it's a, it's a, it's a therapy because you, you find their peace and serenity as well. All right. Any more comments or questions before we close this with a prayer? I hope you're blessed tonight. Thank you so very, very much for for, for studying with us and for joining us tonight. Ah, uh, today. All right. Do you have any more comments or questions? Let's have a word of prayer today. How many of you here in need of prayer? Just raise your hand. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I'd like to thank you and praise you for the message you've given to us through your word. We praise you and glorify you for this church who had, who had had 37 years of worship and fellowship and, and proclamation of the gospel. Lord, may you continue to shower us with your, with your presence and your power. And I pray that love will continue to be in our hearts, that Jesus will be seen in our hearts, in our spoken words, in our actions. I pray. Those of us who have raised their hands for prayer, that you will answer all of our prayers, and that your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you.